is about to blow your mind. Special edition of Gold Mine Mondays. To my left, we have uh, the wonderful, the incomparable. Uh, I call her Lisa Junior. She's now going by Shira Yantisa. Glad to have you here, madam. Thank you for having me. All right, so we want to talk about uh, this uh, new birth, as we would call it, right? So, first of all, tell everybody who you are, where you're from, your background. Um, well, again, my name is Shira Yantisa. I'm actually here. Um, I'm from Macon, Georgia, born and raised. Um, I got into music because I've always been in music. I come from a musical family. Um, my great-granddad was in a um, gospel quartet. What? Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, my, my grandma has 12 brothers and sisters, and they had their own gospel choir. Um, so... Um, coming along in that type of family, I didn't have any choice but to sing. We sing all the time, like, even at family functions, we never have, like, choirs to come in for, like, stuff like that. Our family just always sings, so. Ah, so it's, it's, it's mama's side, right? Daddy's side. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay, cool, cool. Yep. So, okay, so you grew up in a musical family, so y'all was always singing. Mm -hmm. uh, families that always sing, Was it was it a, a choice or something you just kind of naturally did? It was actually pretty natural. Like just, it was always singing or music always going in our house. So, mm -hmm. um, my grandma raised me, my dad's mom raised me. So, it was always music going. She's always singing. When we got together with family, is at some point in, in the gathering, everybody's gonna be singing. So it's just it really just came natural. Like a family tradition. Mm -hmm. like a, Okay. All right. Cool. So, what made you want to go from the choir setting or the church or religious setting, so to speak, to now we got the the soulful, sultry sheer coming out? What made you want to make that transition? Okay. Cool. So, my mom is actually I'm going to credit her for introducing me to secular music mm -hmm. because in my grandma's house we ain't listening to nothing but gospel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. My mom was actually in the military, so anytime she came home, like that was my time to, you know, hear what kind of music she listened to. Mm -hmm. So um, I love music. I actually, you know, I, I, I played clarinet and French horn in mm -hmm. high school. Mm -hmm. um, when I went to college, I was a minor in music. So, and I just love music, any kind of music, but soul music, of course, R&B is, you know, my go-to. All right. So, who, who was that artist that made made you say, you know what? No, no disrespect to the gospel. That's always my core, my 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 root of who I am. Mm -hmm. Who was that artist that made you say, oh, I think I want to do this? Um, um, is so it's gonna be a group. Okay. Um, my mom introduced me to this group called Switch. It's an old school group, really old school, um, with Elder Barge, oldest brother. Oh, yeah. okay, 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 okay. <laughs> um, so I said, my mom was in the military, we were going, she was taking me with her back to base, and um, she put that on, and I was like, bro, these guys, it's fire, like, and literally it wasn't, that's when it was birthed into me to, you know, initially I just wanted to do backgrounds. They backgrounds are like just so intricate and so fire. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, I want to do that. I don't even have to be a lead. I just want to do that in the back. Uh, so <laughs> the barge, the barge tree is mm -hmm. what kind of pushed you into. It. Okay, all right, right, cool. That's dope to know. Hmm. And shout out Miss Lisa by the way. <laughs> uh, all right, so you get from there, and then you know, you, you say, hey, I, I'm into this soul music. This is what I want to do. I want to be a background singer. Where do you pivot from there? Okay, so uh, I was still singing in church, mm -hmm. singing in the choir. I literally, even though that's what I always wanted to do, I never thought I would actually ever do it. Mm -hmm. um, so I just continued to sing in church. Um, and then for a good little while, I wasn't singing at all. For probably about 15 years, I just stopped singing. Mm -hmm. um, and then around 2018, I started going to do karaoke. Just 
you know, just playing around, just finding my voice again. I remember that. Um, and then one night at karaoke, this guy came in there and heard me sing Mr. Be the Slow. <laughs> and at that point is when you were, you know, moving from rap to R&B. Mm-hmm. And you asked me, say, hey, I'm looking to do this thing. I need a background singer. And that just sparked everything for so me. It was a, so just to be clear, it was a 15-year mm-hmm. just mute phase for you. No mm-hmm. singing, no nothing. Yeah, other men just sing their own, no. Hmm. Okay. All right, so we get into the background thing, and then from there, because we got a a, a, a a solo product coming from you pretty soon, right? Yes. All right, so t- lead, you take me through the steps of that. Okay, so I started singing background for you, um, and fortunately, um, I think it was like our second gig at Brookhaven. Um, a certain somebody put me on the spot and told me to sing a solo song like at the end of your gig. Uh, it's a you know, it's like, oh, no, no, I can't do that. <laughs> but I did it. And um, then from there, you, each gig we had, you kept giving me spots to sing, mm-hmm. um, which grew my confidence. And then um, Kenny Pratt suggested I write a song and record it. And I was like, oh, I don't know, but I'm going to do it. Called you, I was like, "What you think?" He was like, "Yeah, you should do it," and I did, and here I am, about to release a single and an EP. <laughs> all, right, all right, so uh, that was a pretty just straightforward story. So, a fifteen year gap. Mm-hmm. You get you get with with myself, mm-hmm. do backgrounds, and it's just so. Take us through like, what's your songwriting process? Because you you pretty much did this on your own. So what, what's your process when you say, okay, hey, this is going to be my introduction to the world as a solo performer. This is what I want to do. What's your thought process going into it? Wow. Well, um, literally, I, it wasn't really a thought process. I just actually just did it. Like, um, it was suggested to do it. You encouraged me to do it. And I was like, let me just put this pen to the paper. So um, the my first attempt at writing uh, was actually uh, writing to a remix version of your song right now. Mm-hmm. Um, initially, I wanted to, um, I wrote a verse, and I wanted to actually propose to you, like, hey, let me get on your remix, like, mm-hmm. as an answer to your song right now. But I was too scared to even ask. <laughs> I, I, I did not know I was too scared to ask. Um, I did let you hear it, and you was like, oh, that's dope. Yeah, that's cool. And I was like, I ain't even gonna ask. So I just took that verse and turned it into a full song, which was the first song that I recorded, which is gonna be on the EP. It's called All Night. So, and then from there, I just started taking like my life experiences, mm-hmm. things I was currently going through, and just writing it out. Okay, so prior to then, you never written a song no. or nothing? No. So all of this is. That what people are about to uh, get, receive is brand new, fresh, out the oven. Mm-hmm. Your first attempt at doing anything. No yeah. prior background in writing songs. You never wrote poetry or no. nothing. No. Nothing. No. Ever no. Ever. <laughs> okay. No. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Cool. So, all right. So, my question to you when you came to me and said you wanted to do this, I said, okay, what what's going to be your lane? Mm-hmm. So what made you just what made you what gave you the I guess hmm, the the uh, definitive answer for what lane you was gonna choose to go in because you know I, I mean when I when I say lane because you got some some uh, artists female artists that are strictly about uh, the soul aspect of the music mm-hmm. and being being artsy and then you have some that are just straight like vulgar and mm-hmm. you know. Raunchy, not vulgar, but like the kind of edgy, raunchy type of material. Mm-hmm. What what made you decide what your lane was going to be, um, or who did you want to like pattern yourself like similar to? I don't know if I have a lane or if I've established a lane. Mm-hmm. You still find yourself. I'm still finding myself. Like all of my songs on the EP sound totally different. Mm-hmm. Um, none of them sound the same. You will hear one of the songs and be like, "It's a little country in there." Like. I, I love all manner of music, all kinds of music, all genres I listen to. So um, 
there's not like one person I would say that I would want to that I currently emulate myself after. I just not know. emulate. So okay, everybody. We, I'm not saying that you want to copy somebody, mm-hmm. but like like you know, there's a lane. Like you got when you think of a certain group of like say for instance, I'm just gonna pick a name. So mm-hmm. if you if you think uh, Jill Scott, what mm-hmm. would be a, a, a artist that you would probably think would be on the lineup with her, like for a show? So you got Jill Scott, and who else would come to mind? Um, like neo soul artists, probably like um, Ndiaye, maybe Erica Badu. Right, that's uh-huh. what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. Not, okay, and cool. all those artists are totally different, mm-hmm. but they're in the same vein. Correct. Okay, that's cool, what cool, I was cool. getting at. Not not, not that you want to be somebody mm-hmm. or something like that, but you know. Yeah, I don't know who I would put. I've, I I pride myself on being a lover of '90s music. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I had to put myself in a show with anybody, I definitely would want to be on um, up there with maybe the Brandies of the world, okay. the SWVs okay, of the so world. Okay, so that's what I'm going. With. Okay, so that's what that's what yeah. I'm getting. At. Okay, okay, cool. cool, cool. So that that '90s vibe where it was about more so about uh, feeling and expression, more so just mm-hmm. being versus being just being edgy. Right. Okay, so that's what I was getting at. Okay, mm-hmm. cool, cool. So, what are your expectations for the project once it releases? Um, I don't know. I, I don't, literally, I don't know what, what my expectation would be. What I would like is definitely for people to receive it mm-hmm. and like it, you know, mm-hmm. but I'm just happy to be doing something that I love mm-hmm. and being able to actually complete it and mm-hmm. put myself out there. That's not overthinking. I don't know about, oh, cut back on the overthinking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it, for, for starters, cut back on the overthinking, but I'm I'm really happy um, with what I have. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So any plans for any like visuals coming up or anything that we should be anticipating or? I would love to do a visual, especially for the single that's coming out. Um, and the single is called again? Guards Down. So y'all be on the lookout for that. It's going to be releasing on January 24th. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Produced by who? Produced by Mr. Kenny Pratt. Right, and the full EP is called? The full EP is called Chance. Mm-hmm. Um, produced by who? Produced by Mr. Kenny Pratt. All right. So how was that <laughs> process of, of working with uh, Bishop Pratt? Um, <laughs> it was Talk cool. Skin, it was actually really cool. Like, um, I was super nervous the first time, and he made everything like super easy, very comfortable. Like he wasn't like, yeah, it was. It's cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. So, any additional writers on the project, or is it just all you, or all me? No, no. <laughs> so one song in particular that, um, of course, I, I got the first dibs on hearing this thing is the song I'm, I'm kind of hating on because you got a good guitar solo <laughs> and I ain't got no good guitar <laughs> solo yet. Uh, talk about that song in particular because that, that's the one that, that stands out to me. What, t- tell us the premise behind that song. Okay, that song is called um, With You. It's, it's a very much a love song. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely going towards the wedding song lane Mm -hmm. and it's about um just being deeply in love with the person that you're with like no matter what's going on in the world as long as you know it's us anything is possible just with you like it's a safe place um yeah all right, so now that you've got, gotten your jitters out of the way and you, you've been on stages, and I know we pushed you, uh, when I say we, myself, and the band, and, and Pratt, and you know everybody's kind of pushed you out to the front, mm-hmm. and, and you're starting to spread your wings, uh, are there any uh, upcoming events that we should be on the lookout for? We could see Miss Sherry and Tisa. Uh, so uh, right now I am going to be performing um, on February 10th, at Blueprints Love, Wine, and Dine event. So that'll be my first um, performance as a solo artist. Um, so y'all come out, it's gonna, be a, it's gonna be a nice time, a nice vibe. I won't be the only artist there, but definitely, you know, if you wanna support me, hey, come on out, good food, good music, 
get y'all a little something, something to drink, you know, come by yourself and bring your date, hey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if people want to tap in with you, how can they find you? Um, so you can find me on social media. Um, you can follow my artist page on Facebook, Shira Yantisa. Or you can follow me on Instagram at just underscore Shira. That's J- at J-U-S underscore S-H-E-R-A. So now is this just a, uh, a passion project or are we just embarking on a full-fledged music career? Um, I'm going to say it started out as a passion project. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like um, since I've started doing it, like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So definitely it is something that I am going to continue to work in and work okay. on. Um, so yeah, I, I plan on being in this thing for as long as the good Lord allows me to. Okay. <laughs> right. Anything else you want the people to know? Um, hey, just be on the lookout for my single, January 24th. Mark your calendars. Follow me on social media for updates. Um, EP, February 10th. Be on the lookout for that. And well, I want people to know that uh, Shira is very receptive to criticism because <laughs> she's ran a few things by me, and you know, I'm I'm that honest friend. If you you send me something, like if I don't like it, I'm saying, uh-huh. or you know, anything, uh, I'm gonna give my honest opinion. I'm never like bashing, but you know, I always give my honest opinion. I want to say that she's very receptive. She takes my feedback, and she'll go back and tweak stuff. And I'm really proud of her in this project. She had no assistance from me. She did everything. I just wanted her to say that, hey, I did this on my <laughs> own. And uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to see you spread your wings and start to fly. So uh, now that you, now that you've proven to, not that you had to prove yourself to me, so don't take mm-hmm. this the wrong way, but now that you've proven to me that you are serious about what you wanted to do, I would love to uh, help you uh, cultivate some stuff. Absolutely, y'all. This yeah. my mentor for real. Like, I'm, 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 <laughs> I look at him as my mentor. Um, we've been in the game a long, long time, so yeah. I appreciate every little bit of feedback, criticism, help, yeah. all that good stuff. Like, no doubt, yeah. no doubt. So, uh, ooh, January the twenty fourth. Twenty fourth, the single drop, which is again guards down. Guards down. What's about what's that song about? Okay, so Guard Sound is about <laughs> you've met this person that you like mm-hmm. and y'all gotten to know each other, but at this point like if you, you feel like you wanna take it to the next level, of course you have to have some level of vulnerability. You gotta let those guards down so you can see if it's, you know, worth moving forward with. Yeah. And that's another thing I like. She's being very vulnerable in in the art, which you don't really see that a lot uh these days. Uh, like I said, more more R and B right now is kind of more edgy and just straight about the raunchiness, the the sexual aspect, which is it's, it's all dope. Don't get me wrong, but I like the fact that she's taking um, her personal experiences and allowing herself to be vulnerable. And I think y'all will appreciate what she's coming with. So I'm happy for you. Thank you. I can't wait to see your uh, first. Video, you gonna teach people how to do the sheer rock? You can make it a challenge. <laughs> sure, we got this thing we call a sheer rock. Like if you look in, in anytime you've seen um, anything that we've done live, and she's like singing back up to me, she has this little rock she does, and we call it the sheer rock. So <laughs> we're gonna make that a challenge to see who does the best sheer rock. Right? So, if nothing else, I don't know who. Uh, no, 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 let's scratch that. Come on. Tell me who are your uh, top five influences as far as musical. Okay, I can definitely do that. I'm gonna say first, um, Brandy. She's a ooh, she's the dopest vocalist I know. Um, she, she's definitely one of my favorites. I like um, she puts some melodies together, the harmonies. Yes. Together. Untouchable. Okay. For sure, um, Brandy. Um, Anita Baker. Mm. I didn't see that one. I can see Brandon, but I didn't see that one. Okay. Definitely Anita Baker. I love Anita. Um, Erica Badu. Mm-hmm. Definitely my top it, I five. I think that's what you were singing when I um, came to karaoke. Yep, yep. Um, of course, Jasmine Sullivan. She's just mm-hmm. a beast. Okay. Um, and oh, let me see who would be fifth. It's just so many. It's so many, like, I, well, I mean, don't limit it to five, then. <laughs> keep going. 
Um, big Aretha Franklin fan. Like her range is thick. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, PJ Morton. Like I'm I, new to PJ Morton, right? Mm-hmm. I got hip to him from uh, uh, you, and and then I saw his interview on the uh, Tank podcast. Mm-hmm. So I'm new to him, but he's definitely dope. Yeah, he's super dope. Um, I'm gonna stop right there because I would have named off a hundred people. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, how, what would uh, what, how would you describe your writing style? Okay, so I'm still learning as mm-hmm. a writer. So initially, I literally um, was not writing to anything, just no beat, no nothing, just mm-hmm. you know writing my thoughts, and then. As I wrote my thoughts, I would just imagine how I wanted the song to sound in my head. Um, Mr. Fred is just so amazing. I would come to him and be like, hey, this is uh, what I wrote. This is what it sounded like in my head. And he literally just took everything and just brought it to life. Like, literally, I don't know anything about how I'm supposed to write music. (laughs) Um, But I am still learning, so... So, was he um, intricate in telling you, like, well, I know you took the feedback that I give you, mm-hmm. that, that, that I gave you, excuse me, mm-hmm. um, as far as, like, can I say it? Mm-hmm. I would say condensing, right? Right. Because when you first, when Shira first jumped out there, she was <laughs> sending me these ideas and, like, the, a million words. The verse, <laughs> the verse had, like, 84 <laughs> balls. I'm like, hey, man, <laughs> you gotta come get to the hook at some point. <laughs> so, you know, uh, so was he, was he, uh, intricate and, like, uh, important in, like, helping you structure the songs as well? Or did you kind of just. I think I pretty much had the song structured already once I came to him. Okay. Like once you once you gave me uh, feedback in the game, I'm like, hey, your bars, should, your verses shouldn't be more than like eight to twelve bars. Like get to the point and get it over with. Mm-hmm. Like that definitely helped me. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, but um, what he was very very helpful in, mm-hmm. it, even though I I knew like how I wanted the song to sound. Mm-hmm. His his vision for the color of the song mm-hmm. is is like yeah. I got you. I got you. So again, shout out to uh, Talk Box Kenny. Um, yeah, I think I think I think that's it. I, uh, unless there's anything else that you want to tell the people. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, so my personal question, I want to know like has has, has uh. Mama heard the project. So, um, she hasn't heard the finished project. <laughs> she has heard the um before like the the rough the rough version. Except for one it's song. A, it's that one song. Except for one song. How do you think she's gonna react when she hears that? I don't know. I just advise her to uh, skip it. <laughs> oh, you already told her to skip it. Yes. Oh. All right. Okay, so 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 <laughs> Tell me about that song. Okay, Mr. <laughs> okay, I wrote this song, y'all. I, I want to tell you, like, working with Kenny was, like, super dope. But I did, a couple times, hit a wall um, in the studio where I was like, you know what, maybe this really is not for me, for real. Um, and I think, I, I definitely want to say thank you to him for, like, pushing me, like, no, like, everybody hits a wall, like, keep going. So I wrote this song, it was called Fuck You. <laughs> she let me hear this song, by the way. And the first time I heard it, I was like, oh. So I said, we're going to instead of calling her Sheer, we're going to call her Nasty Mate. No, that's that's all night. This no, 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 I'm sorry, you're right. You're yeah. Right, you're right. So, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So this song, because um, I was trying to come up with an idea of like where I was going to be going with the EP, like what the songs were going to be on there. We had recorded maybe two songs. And he was like, well, maybe you should um, look into doing a um, hate song or a heartbreak song. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right. Like, that's, when, that's really not where my heart was at at the time. But I was like, I'll try it. And I wrote this song called Fuck You. I brought it back to Kenny. Like, we were in the studio three different days trying to figure this song out, and it just did not work at all. So, hold on. Pause right now. So, okay. So, when you when you, when you you wrote the song, even though, you know, he you were given the, the concept, mm-hmm. 
for most writers, you have to kind of tap into some type of place where you come up with this content, right? Mm -hmm. Was that, did you have that experience that you could tap into, or were you just kind of going off of strictly the concept? Um, I had the experience, but um, for me, I'm going to say what I've learned in writing, in order for it to make sense to me, I have to, like, actually be in that space. Like, I wrote the song. I believe in the words in the song. Like, it is an experience that I definitely had, but I just was not in a fucky space mm -hmm. when I wrote it. Um, I mean, I, I'm not tabling it. Like, I'll definitely probably come back around to it. Um, we just, the, and it wasn't really the actual song. It was just like I couldn't get the timing right on it. Like, that's, that song right there is where um, he was like, yeah, you don't be writing that thing. You need to at least write to a metronome because <laughs> it was, it, I, it didn't make sense in my head. Mm -hmm. Him as a producer, of course, he's been doing this a long time. So we just, it. yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't jail on that one. I literally was like, hey, yeah, I'm about to quit. <laughs> so if you had to pick a song off of the full EP or all, all of the music that you recorded up until this point mm -hmm. that you feel... Uh, displays uh, what Sherry and Tisa is about in one song, which one of those songs would it be? Hmm. I'm not actually going to say if, if, if it's going to display what I'm about. I'm going to say it's probably Guards Now. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's huh. probably Guards Now. Like, so I'm in, in other words, you picked the right single to, to jump it off. Yeah, that's like that, okay. that actual song, uh, that's the song that I wrote the quickest, it came to me the fastest. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm usually a very guarded person. Like, mm -hmm. I'm very quiet. Okay. I don't talk a lot. Like, mm -hmm. when people see me, they be like, what? I thought you was mean. Like, very much RBS face. Me too. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, yeah, I, I don't I don't let my guard down a whole lot. But if I get into a space with somebody, like, I'm willing to do that, like, we locked in for you. So. Okay. Cool. All right. So January 21st, the single. 24th. I'm sorry. January 24th, the single, mm -hmm. Guards Down, releases. All streaming platforms, uh, the full EP, uh, Chance, February the 10th. Yes. All right. Um, I think that's it, man. I think that's it. It's about uh, to blow. Make sure you tap in. Yo. Make sure you're on Tisa. Like and subscribe to the page. Follow on Instagram. Uh, she will definitely have more content coming to you soon. This ain't Goldmine Mondays. I'm Billy Slong. And you are Sherry and Tisa.